Shek Shomit Bob, Kof Zain Beyer, Page Kof Kuf Shomit Hey. So we go down to, <coughs> to the, we bought a quote from the Zoya, what the Nevis and the, we saw that was the Zoya HaChodosh. And from the Tikkune uh, Zoya, the Eirin say, Lamayla, Lamayla, Ad Ein Kate, so Lamata, Mata, Ad Ein Taxi. And so we were Madakti, <coughs> That if we're talking about where ain't safe, what the Indian fan ain't safe is indicative that it's a bleak wool, but ain't the same agbola cloud, you seem to think, what shall to say, myla umata, what is the union of being mechalic between myla umata? And then we saw that if the Kabon is to say that really the air ain't safe is Normally call Hamadrigas, <coughs> believe his chalkers. Then why did you have to beclaw, make two Madrigas and say that the earring safe is in one, you know, even for in cage and in the other, or even short, in tuckless? Just say that wherever you will be, then there's the earring safe place. Asa upon we me, mine. That's what you should have said. If I'm from either way, it's not moving. What is the Lashen Oirein Seif, the cloud, and what is the uh, implication of the two Chiluke uh, Darvis, Mata, and and Myla? And also we notice that in the Indian of Myla, then he uses the Indian for Ein Kates, and in the Indian for Mata, he uses the Lashen Ein, Ein Tachlis. So that's also Moira um, Rashaiva, what is the difference between those two? And then we went on to say that in order to understand that, we have to be marked in uh, what is put down the famous Shaila, the Harvard Rushim Baxidus, and in the great Makabolim prior to the Gila of Teres Aksidus as such, uh, <coughs> the, the, the Pirush of the expression ain't safe. We find the expression ain't safe in all the greats for him in reference to uh, the Abishta, but we find that the Deloshan, the Abishta is referred to as ain't safe, or sometimes he's referred to as Oyer ain't safe. So we need to understand, we were medactic, what is the Deloshan of ain't safe? Mahu ain't safe, Yahuwa Hakushia was there. Yeah, Loma Koroi Bashem ain't safe. Voloi Bashem ain't lay Tchilo. Shuhu Maila Yaseda. That there's a much greater Maila in the union of ain't lay Tchilo as compared to the union of an ain't lay. Ain't lay safe. We're going to see that in Emerson the expression ain't safe <coughs> um, moves in two. Uh, um, in, in two different planes or two different oifani of Madrega. On the one hand, we, we sometimes call the oya, but well, that's only a haora, mi menu is bara. We call that oya uh, ain safe. And sometimes we're going to see that we refer to uh, even Lamaila for al Khoponim in the oya ain safe itself. Madrega is uh, which are mamish mishyachid with atzmusi is bara. Then we call them also ain't safe. And we'll see that according to certain opinions, you can even say the word ain't safe. Mami Shafat Smusi is by We want to say the word, the expression ain't safe. But particularly in the light of that opinion, that the word, the expression ain't safe can refer to Mami Shafat Smusi is by So then the Kashi becomes, yeah, a Kashi Alimta becomes a very deep and powerful Kashi. That uh, uh, why would we refer to Elakus how he is the whole uh, the holidays? We refer to the Indian Elakus how he's beyond all the Hagbolas of the Elamas, including even Ak, 
but that's the, we saw that's the first uh, oilum or the first uh, neatal after, uh, after the union of the Tzimtzum Arishan. Uh, all the madrigas of the oilum uh, are all a inyuf and giloi ha koyach ha gvul va ha The ilu, the expression, ain't safe, refers to uh, the Ibrish, uh, how he's Lomaila, we call Dides, Ha Oilamus, and a Fila, Koidama Tzimtzum, even before certain Hagbolas which lead to the Tzimtzum. So, as, if that's the case, then the Ain't Safe is uh, the uh, a name for the Ibrish, how he's beyond all the Hagbolas of, uh, of the creation, even in its first Mokya. So ask the Sultra Shaila if that's the case, that the expression ain't safe, Kishmoi Kain who refers to Hashem how he's beyond limitation. And every limitation already implies the beginning of some form of Matthias. Then if that's the case, why do we call him ain't safe? We should have called him Ainloy. Ainloy Tchila. Okamishikosov Harama Besefa Pelakalimoy. Shah Dalad Peregimo. Now the Ramad is uh, that's referring to the Rabbeinu Menachem Azaria. What's his name? Uh, Mipano. He was uh, from a city in Italy called uh, Pano, and he was um, he lived about Mistama close to 500 years ago, and he was um, he was a Talmud. The Ramad Mipano. He was a Talmud from the Marie Sruk was his name, and the Marie Sruk he was a Talmud of the Arizal. He was much uh, from the Talmudim of the Arizal, and after the after the Stalkes of the Arizal, the Marie Sruk he went to <coughs> to Italy, uh, and he started the group of Kabukubolim and Chachomim, to whom he taught them the the Teres Arizal. In the Teres Arizal Gufa, there was a certain Shitta Masuyamas, not that it was any way in, in the Yusaitis or in Yonim, of, uh, in, the, in the fundaments of the Teres Kabbalah. But when it came to certain in Yonim, <coughs> uh, there were what you might call certain nuances that grew up a special school of thought, as we might call it, in the Kisve Arizal, founded by the Mari Sruk. And uh, his Talmud Muvak was this, uh, the Rabbeinu Menachem Azari and the Pano de Ramah. <coughs> now, the Ramah was a, a tremendously uh, a, a colorful figure, tremendously, um, uh, how do you call the expression, somebody gives forth a tremendous amount of produce, tremendously uh, productive um, uh, figure, in the sense that he was also uh, one of the greatest Gedolim Benigla the Torah Ve'Eisah Hat Kufa, and he wrote uh, many shilas and chuvas in in Nigla, and he was uh, a rov in certain great kehillas, and he was famous for many of his great psachim uh, in Nigla the Torah. And we, nowadays we have a sefer called the Shilas and Chuvas that are Mami Pano, and uh, he was considered uh, 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 tremendously great in uh, in. Nigla the Torah. However, he he um, he became unbelievable great uh, great in the teachings of the Marie Sruk, and he developed the whole union of Torah Sakabol in a tremendously broad uh, way. And he was um, uh, a very rich person. The Ramami Pano Torah Chagav. He was Torah Vudula Bamalkimecha. The Sikimor says about Rabbeinu Yehuda Anosi that he was also uh, rich. So the Ramami Pano printed certain of the great early for him in Kabbalah, personally on his own, um, on his own, uh, he called Cheshbain, on his own account. And he also printed certain um, works of the Beis Yosef, Afila, and other great Kedola Atel that were much before him, that hadn't been, well, not all that tremendously much before him, that hadn't been brought into print uh, until then, all on his uh, expense for Hulu. But there are many um, uh, stories about the greatness of the Ramah in, in, in Pano, both Bechola, uh, Bechola, in Yonim, Afil, Begashmis, Alachas, Kama Vechama, Benoish, Al Kal Vechema, in Ruchni, yes, that he was uh, a tremendously great figure. So now the Ramah in Pano wrote for him, but he wrote, um, 
He wrote um, uh, his great work, which is a tremendously long work, which is called the Asura Mamore. He wrote a thing called the Asura Mamore. And that's a tremendously long work, which is a combination of uh, Chakira and Kabbalah and Nigla, all, all sorts of amazing uh, things. And then apart from that, he wrote a number of smaller spotting in Kabbalah, in which he was uh, uh, very Masuda and different to some of the other great figures before him. He asked these type of Shilas. He was Chik of Adirish in the, in the basic Shittas and Shilas. Going to get to how we define the Yisraelis, a Kabbalah, and so on. And so he wrote a sefer called uh, Pel Harimain, but that was actually a type of a, a form of a pirush on the on the Hadas um, uh, of the Ramak, the Rabbeinu Moshe Karavira. We'll soon see about him. Also, we're going to meet up with him here. Uh, but he was prior to the Ramak. He wrote the sefer called the Pel Harimain, which is like a commentary or an observation in the. Say this, a Kabbalah that uh, based on certain things that the Ramak uh, stated in his great work. And then he wrote another sefer called the Yainus Elem. That's a very famous little sefer, not, not tremendously long in Kamas, but also deals with a lot of the Say this, a Kabbalah, as they were taught by the Rizal, etc. etc. So he wrote several such works. So in this smaller sefer that he wrote, the Ramami Pano, uh, called the Pelacharimo, then uh, characteristically of his great ability to state things in a very definitional way when I get to the Torah of Kabbalah so the Mami um, Pano as he says because of Ki Ko Kadmoi Nitzchi Ko Kadmoi Nitzchi Voloi Ko Nitzchi Kadmoi Shirabi minanivroim iu nitchim borotsen haboire. Avo ein shum kadmain zulose haboire is bora. Levad. Shehu levade u ha kadmain shemetsi use miats muse. Ve ein loy siba acheres chasper cholim. So now, the word kadmain means primordial. When we, when we say something is kadmain, then we mean that um, uh, it, it kilo has no beginning. Like we saw the expression, einoi tchilo. Nitzchi means everlasting. But the word nitzchi, as he says, doesn't necessarily imply to something which is primordial. Nitzchi can uh, apply to something which begins... But once it's already began, it, it, it never finishes. Now, how can that be? If it began, that means that something is bringing it into being. So that's what he writes, that Barotzen Haboire. It could be that the Abisha would bring about something which has a beginning, but because the Abishta wanted it that way and the Abishta put into it that power, yeah, therefore it could be that it'll be, it'll be Nitz. It could be that it'll be nitch. So therefore, that's what he writes to Ramah. He puts down a very basic yisod. Everything which could be described as primordial, kol kadmai, nitch, then that's a dover posh. That's like a pshita. If it's kadmai, then it's obvious that it's nitch. Because kadmai means primordial, and nitch means uh, unending. However, loy kol nitzchi kadmoi. However, it doesn't necessarily follow that everything which is everlasting is prim primordial. <coughs> and he says, why? Why does he say that? Sherabi minani vroi. Because he makes a, 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 a very sharp point that many of the things which have been brought into being, many of the things which have been created, but they obviously start somewhere, they will nonetheless be everlasting due to the fact that the 
Ebushta wants it that way, not that if they've been brought into being, that they must be Nitzchri. On the contrary, something came into being, then that uh, implies that it was caused by some cause, then it's Talui and Mugbar Ali, they that cause. But the rots and the can be poel, that it, it will be Nitzchri. And he gives a dogma over there, the Ramami Pano. He gives a dogma, and he says that Kamami Sichliim. <coughs> And if dolim is yu nitzchim berotzen haboyrei. Now the sichlim and if dolim, that's an expression that he uses for malachim. As many of the great early mukabolim call the angel, the malachim sichlim niv dolim. They're like a power of seichel, which is just all on its own, separated off many other, any other being. In other words, like a spiritual being that has no goof. Yeah, and they call them sichlim niv dolim. Now that doesn't. Uh, that's not to say so the fact that the altar brings it in Malachim do have really a goof but they don't look at me what we understand as a goof so therefore they're called Shikli Imnir Vidolim so he says that the Ramami like the altar brings in the Kutu I don't know if you're familiar but the altar touches in the famous uh, passage in the Davni we say every day that the Abish is Yoytza Mishor Sim Vi Asher Mishor Sov we say it in the Bilchus Krishna when we talk about the Malachim, every day in Davni, you say, Yoy to Mishor, Sim, Vyasha Mishor, So, So what is that? What's that double of Lord's name? He creates those who serve him and those who serve him. I mean, what, what is it, uh, what's the implication of the double Oshin? So the Altar Rebbe says that there's some Malachim that the Avishtha brings about, Almanas, that they should only last in a very temporary way, and then they, they carry out a certain limited Shlikas, and then they, they, as it were, disappear back. They are nivla, nivla in the um, in the ancient say. Like we find uh, that the uh, the Gemara brings up the sector Sanhedrin, where the Gemara says that Hoichi Akadosh Baruch Hu et Boi Beinayim Vesolafon that the Eved should put his finger amongst the Malachim and he burnt them. So the Altar Rebbe says that's referring to those Malachim that they only come into being for a certain limited very limited uh, shlichas or point and then the Ebishter just as it were points his finger at them and so the altar of says that's a gilu you ain't safe shalomayla miyakos shalahem lakabel and my mother they just become nichlau in the ain't safe oh but he said of asher mishor so yeah that's referring to malachim which are everlasting the altar of said that the Ebishter brings about certain malachim that he intends them to be Mishesh and Meipreshis Ad Adain Adain Saif or Al Chaponim until he will decide that he's going to take them away. Of a Mitzad, the way he created them, they would just be everlasting. Ella Im Cain, he would see reason to bring about their Saif, which that may be the case in the time of Tchias Amazim or Kaitzer Bazei. Edifah, Lafisa comes to us that there can be a being, a Sikhlim Nivdolim, or does it the Malachim, or they came into being, yeah, but, yeah, and my mother, they have all the Hagolas of a Nivro, that's what he says, Kamamiya Nivroim, or nonetheless, they are Nitchim Berotana Haboy, it's only purely the Rotan of the Avishta would hold them in, in an everlasting state of a they would be uh, ultimately they would deteriorate or they would uh, or they would uh, finish so we see then that something can be nitchi even though it's not kad kadmain of something which is kadmain and that's poshit but that's a sheet that it's nitchi now the same thing we find when we get to the to the heavenly bodies to what's called the planets <coughs> it's brought down in Siddha uh, B'Shem HaYerushalmi is a famous Yerushalmi which says that the planets are Chazokim Kiyayim Hiboram that even though they should have in themselves the union of what's called deterioration because after all they're created beings in a, an atmospheric situation etc etc they should deteriorate and the Yerushalmi says that this, the heavenly bodies compared to the way we understand deterioration, don't have deterioration. In other words, they just keep going virtually, ain't safe. So it's a similar reason. So the 
says, how can that possibly be? There are after all created entities. Rots and Abweir, I say Vilder, Vilder Eberstein, there's a bigger reichers about that in Kamra Hem Shechem and Sillism, and in uh, the famous Hem Shechem Beis, the Rebbe Rashab is Marich, or that Agwes Arichas, but in Kamra Mekoyimus we have about the heavenly body. That's another dogma, you know, this idea of a created being which is Nitzchi. However, says the Ramo, that uh, Emes a Kadmein, there's no other apart from the Eibishtah. Uh, Emes a primordial being, which means that he has nothing which brought him into to being. That is only the Eibishtah. Shehu levadei hu ha-Kadmein. He is the only primordial that the Ebushta is the Emesa Kadmain for which because there's nothing brought him about. That is a very famous lesson that occurs in some of the great uh, early Mukubalim that the Matthias of the Apishta is just Mitzad himself. In other words, his being is the is the reason for his Matthias. In other words, he is his own reason for be, for being what he is. In other words, it does not not show him anything which caused him. He didn't come about due to any other inyan. Well, that's the lesson what the Alter Rebbe writes in Tanya in the famous chapter uh, 20 of the Geras Akoides, that the Abish is Mitsiusei Miat Musei, the Ain Loi Shum Siba, how do you call it, the Ila, the Siba, Shekod Moloi is Bora, Chasper, Shola, bring the altar of it, that he doesn't have any reason or any Ila which would have preceded him. Chodilava, Chodilava Chad. So that's what the Ramah means. The Ramah means that the Abish is Mitsius is from his own self. The Ainoi Siba Achelas Chasper, surely, because immediately you say that something has a Siba, then it came into be, it started at a certain point, and then you say you say that its being is governed by that Siba. In Bamela, there must be some Indian of Agbola in it, in its being. However, the Abish to being as he is a Kadmi. Uh, the emissary Indian of Ein Loi Tchilo, so therefore there's nothing that, that brought him about, as he can place into things which are dependent on him, he can place an everlasting existence into them. So you might say, well, maybe he can make them also Ein Loi, Ein Loi Tchilo, maybe. <laughs> so that's one of those things that by definition is kind of time. <laughs> That if the, if we're talking about him bringing them about, that that's good as that chila. Of uh, the emissaries, uh, it's must be in certain places and cities that the Abish to places in certain inyonim also uh, an aspect kiilo that they were in like chila. If it's only a kiilo, I ain't kind of him to go into that whole reference right now. Ma'ase in kain shar hanim toy which is not the case, all the other existing beings, all other beings which are to be found, Kula Mukudoshim Miainla, yeah. He said all other beings, all of them are uh, new, how do you call it? Mukudoshim. In other words, they've all had a starting point, uh, which that starting point was a Chidush. In other words, it was a new thing, the Gabidi, the void which had uh, preceded it. And not only that, not only are they Mukhudoshim, but they're also Mukhudoshim Miyainla. Yeah. They, they come about uh, in an even of Yesh Miyain, which means a new appearance of an entity from the void. In other words, not preceded by anything else but the Abish to himself. Now that's very interesting because I might have thought that Yesh Miyayin is only Shaykh in the Bria after Malchus Tatsilas. In other words, where I create the, an entity which I call a Yesh, which is the Yesh Shanibro, over to say that all other entities apart from 
de eibuste ao mechudoshi mein leish lechler retta yeah that's a chiddush so therefore the rabbi says now this is already uh, like from there on it's already like a development of the lotion of the rabbi on the uh, the words of the ramo the rama I'm sorry not the ramo but the rama with I yeah we call him I got him mixed up for a moment with the ramo kula mechudoshi me einler yes vafilu ak even yeah, what we called Adam Kadmi. Now, why would that be a feel? Why would he say that that's a Kiddush in your eyes, that even that is Ayn uh, Layesh? Uh, why would you, why would that be a special Kiddush in your eyes? Because we see the word Kadmi occurs there. Yeah, as we translated it into two words, it's Adam Kad, Kadmi. So, uh, if the word Kadmi ap- appears there, that would tend to indicate that it's it's not mechudish ein me yes, but it is yeah ein loy tchilo it's adequate it's primordial. So the Rebbe said the Rebbe no even the highest of all the existing beings and entities which have come about from a gem a filo ark nikro odom de brio it's called literally the man of creation she es loy tchilo. But that indicates, if I say it's it's brio, uh, creation, then that means that there was a, a beginning. About nikra kadmein, ah, you said it's nikra kadmein, you're concerned by the word kadmein. Rachli yoisei kodom liatzilas. He said the word kadmein here is only a relative expression. In other words, that when I use the word kadmein after Eivishter, I mean the word Kadmin in an absolute oifen. And when I say Kadmin, I mean he is primordial, period. Absolute. However, the word primordial, being as based on the word Kad, Kedem, or Kadmin, well, that can mean before, prior to. And when we say Kadmin in the real sense, we mean primordial. In other words, be etim prime, prime, before. However, the Rebbe is saying that the word the Kadmin can also, to a certain extent, be taken in a literal, uh, they call it in a, a comparative way. And you can say something is Kadmin to something else. Even though normally you would say that's Kodom Lazare, you wouldn't say Kadmin Lazare. Now there's a reason for that, because we want to say that uh, Ak is so tremendously elevated that you can't just call it prior to Atsilas. It's so prior, it's so high, that you have to give it a name Kadmoin. So there was a delivery, the word Kadmoin doesn't mean Ainway Tchila. Rachli Yeshe Kodom, it's prior to and beyond the Indian of Atsila. The in came, Kaivan Sheika Hainian Ho, Shakodish Boho, Ainway Tchila. Says the Rebbe, if that's the case, then it follows that the Ike Venegea to Elakus, which is a Kodesh Bocho, is Ein Loit Chila. That's the Ike definitional understanding of, of Hashem in his very essence. Shazel Rachma, Yashaboy is Borava, Loibazulase. And that Indian that he is Ein Loit Chila, that is only in him. Is bora, and not in anybody apart from him. In vain, ka choyo lohem la mukubolim li So they should have called him. They should have called him Einloi Tchilo, since the emphasis kadmi in its absolute terminology is only applicable to him. Then the mukubolim should have used that expression. Vama nikro befi kol sifre akabola b'shem ein. So, it seems, Cain, why is it that everywhere the Abishta is referred to as Ain, Ain safe? Because it's not just a, in the Sifrus for him of the Ramami Pono. It's, it's there in the Arizal and in the, even the great Mukubarim prior to the Arizal and in all the Talmudia Arizal. It's common to all the great Mukubarim, uh, uh, particularly. Those who want to cover from the Torah's Arizal, the expression ain't safe. Why do we use that expression? The word ain't safe. Now there's one little practice that we brought up 
that the Rebbe said that Od, uh, the Ach is called Odom the Bria. Now we didn't go into that, so that's a, a, another expression in uh, a certain way of Pia Kabbalah of looking at uh, the Indian of Ak. Um, and I'll just mention it very briefly that uh, there's a Shitta where the Altar brings it down on Kutitera in Pasha Masai. The Altar brings it over the Bariches. Uh, which according to the Kisra Arizal, we look at um, uh, the very appearance of everything from the Avish I feel prior to the Tzimtum. I feel uh, in the oil of Mamish, Shekreda Ma Tzimtum. Well, that's how we start reckoning uh, the whole side of Atzilas, Bria, Yetzira, Vazir. Mamela Lafiza, it follows, the altar brings in that two days, of a, the day that he accepts more over there, that the oil prior to the Tzimtzum, and particularly the oil which we call Malchus Day in Seif, or that we call Odom Da Tzilus De Klolis. That if we consider all the worlds in a general way, from the oil Harishim all the way down to Oil Masia, we continue, if we consider in that general way, then he said we call uh, prior to the Timsum, uh, the lower gilui of the ancient, we call that Atsilus. In other words, that's called, but it's called Atsilus de Clolus, because we're looking in a general way. If we look in a general way, then it's called Atsilus de Clolus. And it's called Odom de Atsilus de Clolus, because the, to a certain extent, in a very, very delicate and high way, there's only a mock here for the Indian of the Esosphiles, and the Esosphiles are called Odom. They're, they're called Odom. Immediately after the Timtum, we already call it Odom de Brio de Clolus. It's called Odom de Brio de Clolus, uh, meaning that as far as we're concerned, uh, the Indian of Ark is called Odom de Brio de Clolus, and it's called Brio, because as far as we're concerned, like he says here, the Rebbe, it's already Yeshmi, I and after the Timtum, compared to before the Timtum, it's already like Yeshmi, uh, Yeshmi, I in. And it's one on what the Ramban brings at the beginning of his Pira Shalat Torah, that the word Brio, we have no other expression in Russian Kodesh for the act of Yeshmi, I or for the concept of Yeshmi, I in, Ela, Russian Boire, or Brio. So therefore, since we want to indicate that from Lifnaya Timtum compared to Leachaya Timtum, it's like a in if a yesh and therefore we call Achom de Brio, uh, the clothes. And then we say that Oilam uh, Akudim or Oilam Anikudim, they are called Oilam Odom de Yetzira de Clolos. And then we say what we consider Oilam Atzila, what is Oilam Atzila as far as we can say. And as a, what you might call almost tucked in on the end, after Mahus Atzilus, Bria de Yetzira of Asiya, that we know about the, the, the three elements, and Ibrahim, or they're called, or Bika Atzilus is called Odom da Asiya de Clolos. That's what he, Odom, that's what he, Asiya in the Clolos elements. And those are the three in Yonim of, or the four in Yonim, of Atzilus, Bria, Yetzira, Be Asiya, the Clolos elements. And therefore, that's what he said, that in that case point, Ak is called Odom de Brio. Now, it's very important that you take note of these in Yonik, because they occur all over, in, so the beginning, as I said, in, uh, in Lakut Tera, and then they're mentioned in many of uh, the Drushim. If you have a little bit of a background, it helps you to relate to those terminologies in a more exact way, because sometimes it can be Nagea to uh, the simple understanding. So that's why he called Achtin Ivan Odom de Brio. And he didn't put in the word Clolus because he's not interested so much in the whole Yachas of the Clolus. Of, he's only interested in the word Brio. So therefore he called Odom de Brio. Whatever is it, the Rebbe, we got the Shiloh. Why is it that we call the Abishter that should have been called Ein Leitchila, Ein Seif, the Kol Sifi Akabal? Ach Oinia, Yuva. So in order to understand that matter, Yuvan behektem in the uh, going first, in other words, considering first, mashenechlechu amukubolim be'inen akeser im hu miminyan ho'eser sviras. So you you wanted it, so you got it. So the Rebbe says, in order to understand that, we have to go to another machlokes in the mukubolim, 
And that is whether we say that the spheres are kesel is from is included in the Esser spheres or not? Or what do we say? That it's Bikla not in the Esser? It's Bikla not in the Esser spheres. Now why would we all of a sudden jump from this whole massive uh, um, Shaila that we've got up and get to all the Sufi al uh, Why do we call the Evishain say? We jump all of a sudden into a Amachli has been there and a get to Kesel. And the truth of the matter is that we're going to move from that maybe even higher. So why don't you start off, you know, higher and then not, not worry about the Inuf and Kesel. So we'll see that what is, what is Kilo behind this whole movement in the argument. Everything sort of needs a little uh, tie-up and a link-up to link it with its uh, Hampshire. And that is, you have to put on your so-called uh, thinking yarmulke. Uh, and of course, if uh, you're a Mishachista, your thinking yarmulke has also got your key written on it. But anyway, whatever. So you put on your thinking yarmulke, and you think to yourself, well, wait a minute, if I, maybe ain't a chanami. Maybe the Ebushta is tachya ain't a tachya. At Musa is bodic. Mom, it's a very intimate Ebushta. Is ain't a chanami. Yeah. Uh, can't possibly call him ain't say but maybe uh, between the very essence of Atmos itself and the essence of spirit which we all understand that they're limitation yeah, if you talk about lim- limited in Yonim and each one's got its own limited pu'ula and gilui then that's limitation Maybe there's like some union between and some gilu of the Eivishtah, which is a revelation from him, and it's absolute, as therefore as it can't be called Enoi Tchila, because it's a revelation from him. But on the other hand, it's absolutely unlimited and absolutely ain't safe. Yeah, therefore, we'll call it ain't safe. In other words, Enochanami will earn by saying that the word ain't safe doesn't refer to Atzmusa. That will be Makabu, and we, we can't say it refers to the Essosphere, the Essosphere is obviously yeah, not uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, infiniteness, and ain't safe means infinite. And therefore, maybe something, as it were, between, like a gilu from the Abish, between Atmos and the Essosphere, maybe that's our. That's our goal. Maybe that's what we'll find. Ain't if an ain't safe. And we'll be able to say that he's ain't safe. He's beyond the spirits. And yet he's not ain't like Hitler. He's not mummish the, the arts. Now the truth of the matter is that that's a very intelligent move. And ultimately speaking, that's where we're going to wind up. But in order to do that, we're going to go through different ma- madrigas, bezegufa, to try and find which madriga is really more shout to say the union of Ain Say. However, the Rebbe immediately brings that the first try that we find in certain spot him, well, not the first try, but the first lead into that whole try that we're trying to make, is that we find a difference when they get to Sphere Sarkesa, whether it's part of the Essence Sphere or whether it's <coughs> now the word keser ain't over yechim mitay pshute. The word keser means a crown. Now mitad echot, yeah, a crown is a, a thing which is fits onto the the head of the king. It's got a certain nearness to his head. And there's one of the famous deer who was brought down in the mashur. Another great uh, mafoshim on the gemara. But they say that, the, the, for example, the, the crown that the Malchi based David, uh, those who uh, all the kings that descended from David in the line of Malchi based David, is that the crown that David wore had to fit them. And, and uh, miraculously it did, that each of the Malchi based David, uh, they, one of the ways they tried him to see if he was uh, the Emerson king that was meant to be, was that the crown of David and Malchi fitted him. So we see that to a certain extent that the Kesa fits onto the head of the, of the king. In other words, it's got a certain yachas, koshuhu, you know, to the limitation of the king. And yet on the other hand, it, it elevates him and makes him completely beyond everything. In other words, that the king, by putting on the crown, he becomes the, uh, the uh, what you might call, all 
elevated being and he becomes the all powerful being that's beyond uh, all question and all like the Emerson um, Indian of Kings, etc. And therefore he's as it were moved on me Sharia arm completely. Well that's the Indian of a Kesser. And if I, maybe in that Indian of Kesser we'll find this what we're looking for. But on the one hand it since it's related somehow to the spirit, it's not a shem, it's not my atmuse, but it's higher than than the etzim head, and it's higher than the etzim bochma, which is the infant head, and spheres, etc., etc. And my male, since it's higher than them, maybe yeah, it can be mishiachis to him in such a way that we'll be able to call it ain safe, unlimitedness. And therefore, our first move is towards the sin of, of Kesser, because we're going to see that some of the great Mukubalim yeah, tend to define in that uh, a path towards this idea of ain safe. So therefore, that's the spot of why all of a sudden we jump into the universe, uh, a machlekes, which looks to be a, a specific almost machlekes. Why did we, why did we move to that first, and what are we, how is that relating to the problem that we have? So therefore, said the Rebbe, the Rabbim Mekubalim, many of the great Mekubalim, Spiralahu, that some of them is an expression. Uh, in the Gemara, literally, Sfiralu, they are of the opinion. They hold. They hold that the Indian from Kesser is not counted in the Esser spheres. In other words, the, it, it, it's beyond the sphere is so much. It, that aspect of the crown is so mugba, uh, mugba, I'm sorry, moved up and so withdrawn that it's kill, even though it fits on the king's head, but it doesn't have to do with any, any real limitation. It's Ikerinian as it is beyond Amuda. And if they hold that you can't count it in the Esa sphere. And therefore it's, it's got a yachas to the Esa sphere, as we'll see, that it's like a, a form of a leader from the Atmos into the Esa sphere, but it's beyond them. You can't really say that it's one of the Esa sphere. Benika ain't safe, and therefore it's called Mamish ain't safe. The Haramak, the Pardes, however, the Ramak in the safe are Pardes, Shar aim ho ain't safe, that's the name of the Shah, aim ho ain't safe, literally the, the basis of the concept of ain't safe, aim meaning like a mother. Yeah, who, yeah, who are Kesser. I'm sorry. Shar aim ho ain save. Who are Kesa? That he calls the Indian from Kesa aim ho ain save. In other words, it's it's got to do with the Indian from ain save. It's almost like a yeah, a, a mockery to the Indian from ain save. Nechlach aleihem. He differs with them. Uh, the the Ramak, the Ramak uh, differs with these Mukubalim. Nechlach aleihem. He takes a uh, difference of opinion with them. Da Keser, who gam kain miklala es esfir. And the Ramak says, no, that the Keser is, yeah, part of the es esfir. In other words, that he says that, uh, uh, now that's going to lead us into a, 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 a slight difficulty in the counting of the spirit. If I say that the Keser is one of the spirits, then I had ten before I got the Keser. Yeah, I had es esfir. I got the Keser. So if we're going to count the Kesser, then something has to something has to drop out, as it were. And the other way around, those who hold that the Kesser is beyond the whole meaning of the Esosphere, then something must go back, they go back in. So that's got to do with the meaning of Das. It's well known, the famous Pia, what the old Torah brings up in Kuti Torah and Torah Ur and the Kamen Mekimus in his uh, very early Sforim, uh, the old Torah. And it's also brought down in the Kisve Arisa about that, and we'll see more about that as we go along here. That if I count Kesel, then I don't count Das. And if I count Das, then I don't count, or if I count Das, then I, I don't have to count my mother, the from Kesel. And my mother, that's how they would get out of the problem, that the, that the Ramak would say that you don't have to count Das, and these other, they would say that Das is one of the SSU. However, uh, com comes along uh, the Rebbe and he brings down this Machlech. Now the Ramak 
is the Rabbeinu Moshe Kodavira. But as it went on, uh, the Ramak uh, lived in Tzfas, uh, and he was there in Tzfas uh, prior to the um, Arizal's arrival in Tzfas. And uh, the Ramak was an unbelievable Rabbeinu Moshe Kodavira. He was an unbelievable uh, God also in Nigla de Torah. Uh, but Ike Isasuske uh, was in the Inifran Kabbalah. And he's buried right on top of the river. If you have those who've been uh, to visit the uh, the Makim Sakadashim, then they know that the uh, Ramak is uh, found right alongside the Ariza. And we find on many uh, certain issues that there are differences in the whole Kabbalah of the Ramak and the Ariza. That the Ariza was Mahadesh, all sorts of different views of the Kabbalah of Gavi the Ramak. But the Ramak was older and he was senior, as you might say, to the Arizal in status and in age. And the famous savior, you may have heard of it, the Rashi's Chokhmah, you heard of the Rashi's Chokhmah. Uh, he was a Talmud of the, the Ramak. And so was um, um, certain others uh, of the great Mukhobor that we know of. Uh, for example, the Chodedi was written by the Rabbeinu uh, what was his name? Uh, Halevi. Oh. He was Halevi. Oh. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, yeah. The Rabbi Shlom Al Kabit. Uh, he was also um, a Talmud of the Ramak, but he wasn't only a, a Talmud of the Ramak, but he was his brother-in-law. So, if I'm not mistaken, the Ramak and the uh, and the uh, Rosh Al Kabits, they were married to two sisters. But anyway, the the the, the, the Shlom Al Kabits. He saw himself like as a, as a Talmud also, the Ramak, and he had many other great uh, Talmudim, Boish Asma, and he was a tremendously uh, uh, leading and regal figure amongst all the Mukubalim at that time in Tzfas, but that was no small achievement, because <laughs> at that time Tzfas was full of, uh, you know, Penim Yisater and Gedoile, Makayimei, Evelohim Dei, Tere Sakabola, Kiyadua. And so the Ramak, he was like the Zokin of all the, the, the Mukubalim. And you know the famous uh, story when uh, he was Mistalik with the Rebbe. Um, it's not me that's just saying Kavioho. But there's a famous Sikha from the Rebbe about the passing away of the Ramak. You guys don't know about all. Oh, no. oh you know, very famous. <laughs> that's, uh, where, where, the, where the Rebbe says that the whole new idea of the whole Indian of his that maybe it's not really a real thing and it doesn't really happen in the normal way <coughs> that we think of it the tetra begins with the Ramak and it's a whole big thing because the Arizal uh, he was at the he was at the funeral the Arizal was at the funeral of the Ramak because he, he only was uh, with the Ramak for a very very short time because the Arizal was only in Tzfas for about a year and a half you know the whole, the whole thing is just unbelievable uh, the whole uh, swiftness of the whole Gilead of the Tehzakabola of Pia when he was only mums alongside the Ramak for a very short time but he was there at the at the funeral and the, and the Riza said uh, that there was a, a, a pillar of fire came down and it's brought in the Gemara the Gabi Sutton of the great Tanoim uh, uh, that when they passed away there was like a pillar of fire came down from heaven and separated between them and the people and the Rizal saw it, and he was more a, uh, you know, pocket fitness. It, only the Rizal saw it, but he told everybody that there was a pillar of fire that was mavdu between the, the Ramak and Koha Anoshim. There was the funeral, and then the Rizal made an obligation, uh, an, uh, an observation. And he said about the Ramak, a certain Indian, which I, I, I can't go into here, because then we'll turn into a, 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 a beer on that uh, terrace. Uh, Aramak, and then it would get into a beer on that sikhah from the river, and then it would get into um, all sorts of inyanim when they get to the terrace of Mishikhizim, etc. etc. It was saying, can I mock him? He can't get involved in all of that. So I had to say that the Aramak, he was unbelievably great, unbelievably great, and he was Mamsha contemporary, albeit an elderly contemporary of the Arizal at that time in Swat, and he differs, the Arizal differs with the Ramak, despite the fact that he held him tremendously, tremendously high, as the whole uh, Torah of what the Arizal said indicates. However, the Ramak, he says, no, that the Sphira Sakesa is also Miklal Ayasa Sphira. That's what he says. 
according, we're going to see now that these first Mukhubarim that they differ, and they said that Sphiris Akesa is not counted in the Esses Sphiris, it's going to be easier to find a Bechina which will be able to call Ein Tzif, as I explained a few minutes ago. Mashim, the, the, the Das or Amak, is going to somewhat put us in a back into our difficult situation. We're going to have to look for, according to him, I'll call upon him, a further inquiry as to what would be the Emma together of the Ein Tzif. Yeah, he said uh, the explanation are the words of those Mukabolim we mentioned above, the sphere lahu, the ha'ilu ishiyesh lakesa, al kol aspheres, the zero kolade ishiyesh ilu lakesa, who shakulam hain mukudoshim mi ayim layesh, ma she ain't came bechina sakesa, ain't a mukudash. Hmm. A moment, let's see that over. Those mukubolim that hold that the word ain't safe is referring to the kes, to kesa, and kesa is lamaila me asfiras, it's not nimna im asfiras. He said they hold that the wondrous point or the speciality, ilui, that there is in kesa as regards all other spheres, and then he puts in brackets that, that everybody holds that there's something remarkably higher in Kesa than all the others, even according to the Ramak, we're going to see that even though he holds that it's Nimno Ima Esospheres, he holds that there's certain Mylas Atzmiyos in Kesa, which makes it Mugdal Beholzor, because that's a whole concept that we pointed out before. The ultimate Pneumius of a Kesa is that it's Mugdal Mi Haro. And in fact, everybody holds that there is some great Ilui in the Spheres of Kesa. What do these Mukubalim hold? They hold shakulam aim chudoshim mi ayin layesh, ma she ain't kain, bchina sa keser, einam chudash. It didn't come about as a new, it didn't come about as a new thing. De liyoish, becho asfiris mina chokma ulamata, yesh kailin. She say inyan bria yesh mi ayin kiyadua. There's no Kaili. There's no Kaili. Tomon means there in Aramic. Shama, Shama. Over there, meaning in Keser, there is no Kaili. The word Mo'ona in Russian Aramic means Kaili. The mitfus lay. Laminda Bay, that you should be able to grasp it and through that know something about it. Lamitva Slay Laminda Bay, Yadia Club, that you should be able to grasp it and through that know some knowledge or so have some grasp of knowledge about that Indian. At Kanle, show you now. There's no Kalim in Kesel. So, what does he mean by saying? that according to them, the Kesa is not Mechudash. Now we just said that everything is Mechudash. Everything begins from uh, the Avisha. It all has a start. Because we said only the Avisha doesn't have a start. Only he doesn't have in himself any beginning. He's the Kadmoim. So uh, what do we mean then by saying that these people hold that the Kesa is Eino Mechudash but all other spheres are yeah, mukhudoshi. What does that mean? So obviously it doesn't come to be says of that cloud that we just. Now what do we mean <coughs> by the word mukhudash? We mean that there's come about, as it were, a new entity which has kilo not been there but before, and now you can say that it's an entity in its own right and has to be, as it were, almost considered as almost a, a separate thing. Shinkate all the other inyonim, even if we'll say that they began at a certain point, it's not that they're completely devoid of beginning, but they only emanate from Hashem, and they're only like, you know, what you might call luminescences from Him, but not an entity which appears as a, almost like a separate being. 
And therefore the word Mukhudash means that there's like something come about that's as it were an entity that feels itself or exists in some way in a very delicate way for itself. That's what we mean by the word Mukhudash. So they want to say that the the inner for Kesha has for Sholem to say that it's Mukhudash. It's Mukhudash in the sense that it began from the Atman. In that respect, this is Mukhudash. But that's not called Mukhudash, because the word Mukhudash here means that there's come about like a, a, a separate entity that can, as it were, now be almost dealt with separate from Hashem. Right? So they want to say that in Kesha, that's not Chaya. And in all the other spheres, however, it is Yashaya. And therefore, according to them, the Indian of a sphere means that something has come about in a form of Yesh Mi'ayin, which makes it like a, a reckonable entity that we have to consider apart from him, as it were. Something new. Oh, this is a new thing which wasn't there before, before as it were. It's not just an emanation from him. It's like another entity. Uh, and how can that possibly be? So it appears that for the moment we want to say that's because in all the spirits of the Inifan Kalim. However, in the Inifan, he brings from the Zaya that in the Inian of Kesha there's no Kalim. Now, if you, I don't know if you guys, uh, well, I don't suppose you can expect uh, that, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but we just, uh, we're not all that far away from Pasha Bukhu Kaisai. And Pasha Bukhu Kaisai. In uh, in uh, Torah, uh, uh, um, in Lakuti Torah, the very famous mime from the Al Tarebin. Well, actually, he's got two mime on him. He's got one mime in the actual Seder Bukhu Kaisai, and then at the end, he's got a famous view on the Indian Atimtola. It's uh, several pages long. That's one of the most um, complex mimorim that we have from the Alter River, in which he's Mavaya the Tzimtzumarish. <laughs> and if, if you can be confident in yourself to say you've learned through that whole mime and then you're clear exactly about the Tzimtzumarish, then I'll shake your hand. <laughs> I mean, that's a very amazing achievement. <laughs> In other words, it's tremendously uh, complex uh, view in the whole Indian of the Chibna. From here, the author of it gets into all these sort of shilas over there, you know, about the oil, and about the kegelium, and about this, and about emanation, and about the Bria Yesh Miyayan, etc., etc. But Terahagav, a former Talmud of ours, took upon himself, and he's completed the task of translating that mind. And so, so in this book, you ever see, you've seen it. Just read the holiday my morning. You've seen it. You haven't seen the same as David Rothschild. He translated that mime from the Old Torah. So I must say that uh, I shake his hand. That's a, that's a remarkable piece of work to translate that into English. Huh? Huh? It just published. It just got published. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And um, I wrote a, a sort of a approving article about it that uh, got published in the base my chef anyway whatever so it's because um, I felt it was uh, I didn't say write the article I dictated it yeah. but it, 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 it's an amazing piece of work he translated that mime into English anyway uh, suffice it to say that what it, uh, what it, uh, it all comes down to is that uh, in Spira Sakesa the altar brings over the Boshan parts of Bukhul Toysai. And in that long mime, uh, excuse me, do you have some sort of uh, small rapport with him all the time? So in that case, avoid it. It's um, that we, uh, that the, the altar is Mazba over there, that there's no Indian in Kesa of Oisius. That's what he's Mazba in Boshan Bukhul Toysai. And even if he says there are Oisius, uh, in a lower Indian of Kesa, they're what we call Oasis Hakika, they're part of the Etem of in, in the pure uh, uh, Aya Madrega in Kesa, there's no uh, Oasis. That's what the Zoya Kodesh is referring to, because Oasis and Kalim are basically the same concept. Just that as we go further down, we come into uh, Indian of Oasis from the concept of Kalim. The sphere of Kesa, according to that call from the Zaya, is only Oya. It's not, it's not Kli. Now, what's the difference between Oya and Kli? Oya, as we've seen, is a Dova which is built in Sophie. Oya has in itself uh, the Pshitas and the Ain Seif of the Ain Seif, of the, of the Ain Trila. 
ואילו דאין לפעמים כלי זה אורי הגילוי דה כוח הגרוף עם השם, זה אורי הספציפיק אנטי, which is one thing and not a... and not another. So what the, what the Zohar means is that even in the highest of possible considerations, there's no kalim, a meaning, there's no oisius, as the altar brings it up there in Lekutu Terah Barichas, there's no oisius in the union of Fankesa, as if that's the case. Since they hold that there's such a union as that, uh, uh, the, these Mukubalim, they saw that there was a, a, a complete half uh, uh, and withdrawal in Kesa from anything to do with the specific or even the mocker of the specific. Yeah, therefore, they hold that Kesa is a union completely beyond the union of anything Mukhudash. It's not even a mocker for anything Mukhudash. Yeah, therefore, uh, in that regard, it's like between the ain't safe and the spheres, how are the spheres mukhudashim? Because they have kalim. Yeah? I'm wondering, since they have kalim, that they're mukhudashim. But Elo, the Indian from Kesa, doesn't have kalim, it's not mukhudash. So here, just to make it even uh, a little bit more com- uh, complex, so the Rebbe says, Well, a fiam is boy a khan. Although what I've explained here in this Hemshech, a khan in here, yeish loyma shegam mitzada oya nikroi mukhudashim. Now here's a Chiddush, which is always like that in Chassidus Chabad, always uh, in light of everything that's been said, Alpia Kabbalah, you're just starting to get yourself restful when you're getting it sorted out. All of a sudden there's a certain tremendous scratch which comes about in the Chassidah. And so that's what the Rebbe says, that he's explained in the previous Maimah, and we mentioned it earlier uh, uh, in uh, the first year, that Chochma Datsilas compared to the Eintzai is called Yeshmi. And compared to the immediacy of an ain't safe, it's called yesh me, me ayin. So the Rebbe said, Chochma, first of all, mitad the way the Rebbe understands it at the end of the previous Maima, anyway we can understand it that way. Although there's another beer which helps us out a little bit, and that is it's well known that Chochma really doesn't have a kli. Chochma is behemoth, oyer, beloy kli, kimat. Because Chochm is the Amitishinian of the Gili Shalamayla Mi'at Sphere, so it comes in, like the Altar Rebbe says in the Agor, in Tanya, in Perik Lamad, hey, the Chochm is really Ulevadi Vein Zulos, it is no other entity in Chochm. However, the Rebbe said that even if we'll say that there is a difference between Oyo of a Kli in Chochm, however, <coughs> the Rebbe said, I already told you, Yesh Leima, we can suggest, Shekam Mitzad Oyo Nikroi Mukho, even Mitzadir, not only Mitzadir, but even Mitzadir, then the Sphiris can be called Mechudoshim. Shachok Manikra Yesh Mi Ayin Legavi Atzim Sein Sein. Now we learned that at the beginning of the of the Maima. I think in a Keser, who am Shochesh Bepchinas Ein Seif Mam. In other words, that even the Yinefet Chokma. Yeah, being as it is the highest of all the spheres, but it's a sphere, even oil blakely or a feel purely mitadi oil, he said since it's become shayach elakli, and since it's become nimshach into a oil where we already talked about our bother, then so for soft that oil, like Abi Diamit is in the oil is the mile me as feel that's also like a yesh me. Now that's a big Chiddush, but that's what the Rebbe said, and that's what we learn here. And it's one of what the Friedrich Rebbe said, that his father's uh, Yesh Loima is by him a Badai. <laughs> he said that whenever my father says Yesh Loima by me, it's a, it's a Pshitas. You know the same famous story with the Friedrich Rebbe. He said, whatever yeah, the Rebbe said by us, even if the Rebbe said it, it's a Yesh Loima, <laughs> then that's by us, the Tachasar. Habshit is able to call Gerrit Shilsofik. And if I, since the, the Rebbe Rashab says it, Yesh Loima, and we've already learned from the Friedrich Rebbe that when he says Yesh Loima, then we don't have any Sofik Padova, then that means that even the Uyr in the highest sphere in Atil, and even the Uyr Baklau, how it's Mishkal in Atil, even that is called Mukhudash Yesh Mi'ayin, like Abhi the Union from Kesa. Yeah, I'll say Omar and in reference to that, I'll say he said the famous statement, Acha, Lay Nivra Ha'ilom, until the world was not yet created, Hoya Hu Ushmai Bil, what? There was only he and his name on their own. Hu Ushmai Bil, what? This is a statement of the Pirkei Derebi Ali, it's not a Gemara and it's not a Metro Shabbat, it's written in 
a famous medrash called Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer. And over there, the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, he uses the expression, until the world was not yet created, so he's teaching that the Inif for Nivro Oilam doesn't mean the creation of Oilam Azeh. It means the beginning of all Oilam as Dahin Oilam Atsilas. Yeah, the beginning of Oilam is way back. Even Oilam Atsilas. He says over there, there was only what? But prior to Atsilas, there was only the Abishta and his name. In other words, that there was Hashem, meaning Atzmusa Yisbara, for our purposes here. And then there was another meaning called Shmoy. And then there was another in it which called Nero or Elam, and that's all of the spirit. As far as he's concerned, they're Mukhudashi, they're already Yeshmi. Yeah, they're already Yeshmi. I remember here we see this unbelievable remus to another point, as another enter, another kilo state between who, which is Manish, which we'll see for our purposes, and Nivro Oilam, which is Oilam Atsilas, and here we got to see, you know, Shmoy, Oyehu U Shmoy, Bilvar. That was completely on its own, just like the Avish was on its own. In other words, that the Avish revealed and let come out of himself a Gilui, which we call Shmoy, prior to the fact that he actually brought about the beginning of the creation. Which means that between the Atmas and the beginning of the whole Shurash of creation, there was another state which we call this Uyr HaKesel. Amamira, that's not Mukhudash, because it's Hu Ushmoy, it's Kilo together with him, even though it had a beginning. It had a beginning in the sense that the Abish brought it out of himself. Amamira, that's how these Mukhubalim, says the Rebbe. So we'll be able to that as referring to Kesar, but who Nikra ain't saved. According to them, it goes well. Osi Shapir is an expression in the Gemara, means it goes well, yeah, that it's called ain't saved. Yeah, because BMS it does have a B in him. But we'll see more about that as we go along in future and coming episodes. So we see that we've made quite a, a good position for these Mukabalim Yeah, we seem to be working out quite a, an understandable um, and good uh, you know view of the Indian according to them. Well, we'll see that the Ramak deals with them. He doesn't, he's not the cover that. And then on that basis, we're going to have to readjust certain points and so on. And then we're going to have to go higher and we're going to have to move uh, in different directions until we actually come to a very amazing Maskana. As we go for a moment, one second, uh, please. Uh, maybe just turn it off because I have a couple of things I want to say before. Uh, just, oh.